Low interest rates may encourage savers to make unwise investments. The following dramatization mirrors exactly what has happened to some people here in Wisconsin. Gentlemen, if I may have your attention for a moment, please. The Management of Initial Investments International would like to invite all of its employees to join management at Escapades tonight. There will be free drinks, free X, and if we're lucky, a little free entertainment. Your top salesman of the week, Mark, take a bow. We'll also be receiving the grand prize of an evening of pleasure with the lovely Miss Amber in the VIP room. That's right, that's right. Hopefully that's enough incentive for the rest of you slobs to start getting your numbers up next week. Let's go, boys. not too hungry this morning. Mind is I had too much for supper last night, I think. from the city, though. I, I could have driven myself. Stop! Perfect chance for me to take my best guy out to lunch. Promise me we're going to go to lunch after you see the doctor. Just like your mother was. Always worrying if I'd eaten. If I remember to take my medicine. I'm a grown man, you know. I can manage just fine. I know, Dad. You haven't invested any money in these guys, have you? No, not yet. George Torres, you remember George. He said he's making a lot of money with those folks. And he, he sent me this, and he said that this is going to make his retirement, and it can make my retirement. It's not going to make your retirement, Dad. What I mean, I see this kind of thing a lot at work. I don't... don't, well, you, don't you, you, you don't need to invest in stuff like this, okay? Well, those folks must be on the level. George wasn't banking for years. He wouldn't put money in something that wasn't solid. It's got risks, but you got to take risks to make money. You shouldn't worry about that. With your pension and savings, you'll be fine. You can put that extra money in a college fund for that grandchild I'm going to have someday. The grandchild that you're going to see grow up. I hope you're right, Copper Top. Rainy days come too, and you you got to prepare for them. Speaking of that, do you have an umbrella? It's supposed to rain. Okay. You ready? Yeah. yeah it would be good for lunch afterwards, too. Where do you want to go? Let's go somewhere and get some fish. Okay. Oh, we will see fair and split a piece of lemon cake. Salmon, good. too. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. You sure you don't want me to go in with you? No, honey. I got my book. 
You just be bored. Why don't you do some shopping or something? I've got a couple calls I need to make. And I'll check in on you. Okay. Goddard. Hey, Alan. Hey, um, Michelle. How's your dad doing? He's good. He just went in for his treatment. Listen, are you busy today? I've got something I need checked out. No, what do you need? My dad got this mailing I don't feel good about. It's from this company called Initial Investments International. Uh-huh. Now, their address is in the business district, but it looks a lot like that stuff that outfit Chicago used to peddle. Yeah. Give me that address again. Got it. I'll tell you what. Let me check the system, see if any complaints turn up. If nothing turns up, I got a good contact down at the SEC, all right? Hey, your dad doesn't have any money in this, does he? No, but my neighbor George Torres may have. It's like my uncle kind of looked out for me when I was a kid. I don't want to see him get burned. Yeah, well, let me see what I can turn up on this, okay? Yeah. I'll give you a call back. Thanks, Alan. I really appreciate it. You got it. Bye. You have one new message and seven old messages. Michelle, hey, it's Alan. Um... You were right. I've got a couple of complaints on the system about these guys. About five grand plus in losses both times. Now, it looks like they've only been open for business for about the last seven months, and the lease is to a guy named Park Richardson. He's been sanctioned once before by the SEC, so I'm going to go by and take a look a little later. I've already jacketed a case on this one. Hey, I'm sorry, Michelle. I wish I had some better news for you. Can I help you? Hi, Mr. Torres. I'm Michelle Neath. I used to live down the street. McCormick's. Yeah, McCormick's. Yeah. Yes, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, come in. Come in. It's so good to see you again. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm sure that you'd love to see April, but she's not home right now. Oh. She went skiing with our kids out in Denver, if you can believe that. <laughs> wow. She'll be so sorry that she missed you. Me too. Actually, I'm here on business. Okay. Well, let's have a seat. Now, refresh my memory. What is it that you do again? I'm a postal inspector. That's right. Let me take your coat. He said you were tops in your class. <laughs> That's Dad. Have a seat. Well, he's very proud of you. Where do you live now, Michelle? I'm living in the city. I have a loft. Oh, a warehouse. <laughs> What's your dad think about that? You know Daddy doesn't like that. I know your dad, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You said you recommended this company to him a few days ago. And I just, you know, I wanted to ask you a little bit about I, it. I know what that is. Triple I. One of the best investments I've ever made. These guys are sharp, real go-getters. How did you find out about them? Well, I have you folks to thank. I got a piece in the mail. It talked about investing in biotechnology companies. These real ground floor kind of stuff. So I called them up. My broker, a guy named Park Richardson, he got me set up in a small investment and it's been growing ever since. Why do you ask? Some of the returns on investment that they talk about seem really high. Oh, well, you know, they all do that. It's called advertising. <laughs> now, if you look at the fine print, it says that these returns are not typical. It's all here if you read carefully. They're, they're not registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. I asked that very same question myself. You see, this is a general partnership company. And the firms involved, well, they don't have to register with the SEC until they go public. We check with some of the companies they claim to represent, and most of them have never heard of Initial Investments International. And we have some complaints in our system about them. Oh. Well, you must be mistaken. I have my account summaries right here. I was just working with okay. them. Now look at this. Two months ago, I invested $5,000 in FiberCell. And it's currently valued at almost three times that. And when they go public, I'll get three shares for every one share that I already own. That's how this venture game works. It's not like your typical bank returns. Mr. Torres, 
Park Richardson has been involved in a company like this before. He was sanctioned by the SEC for making illegal trades. So if what you say is true, he'd be in jail right now, wouldn't he? No, sir. Often we pursue civil actions against these people. We stop their mailings, we shut them down, sometimes the SEC finds them. But this time I think it's a little more serious. Michelle, I, I know you're concerned about your dad. I'm concerned about you, and I'm concerned about April. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But I have some background in this kind of thing. I know. I know you do. I know. I'm just looking out for You're you. You're just trying to help me. I, I understand. Am. This, I, am. I see I this a lot at work. I think that you need to listen to what I'm trying to tell you. But in this case, you're mistaken. No. There's another Park Richardson. Maybe you're right. Why not play it safe? Call them and try to get your investment back. You know, sometimes they'll pay a few investors off to keep the operation going. Tell them you think it's a scam. Threaten to call the police. Sometimes it works. Young lady, I will do no such thing. These investments have been very profitable for April and I. The way the market is these days, you have to take a few risks if you want to make money. You look. We have taken a few losses here and there. But overall, Park has done a very good job for us. And you have not said anything for which you have any proof at all. And I'm looking at these figures right here in black and white. Mr. Torres, I don't mean to upset you, but this is my job. I see this kind of thing all the time. Just try to get some of your money back. Please. If I did that, I would have to pay penalties for early withdrawals. That could be almost 20%. Wouldn't you sleep better at night? Wouldn't it make you feel more comfortable? I know you're worried about your dad, and I'm not worried about my dad. I'm, I'm not worried to bring about your dad you, Mr. Torres. Something that I know you're one of the I've smartest guys I know, please, Mr. Stand. Torres. You have no idea what these guys will do. Okay, you've got a lot of money involved in this. I want to make sure that you're okay. okay. I'm going to talk to April about it. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. I just. That's okay. You know, you guys mean a lot to me. I'm. <laughs> I'll get your coat. Mr. Bly, can I help you? Yes, hello. May I speak with Mr. Richardson? Yeah, can I ask his colleague? This is George Torres, uh, one of his clients. George, how's it going, my friend? You sneaking out of the house to see some broads while your wife's away? No, no, nothing like that. Um, I was just going over my account summary and uh, uh, taking a look at this Mitchum stock. Uh, it's not doing so well. Yeah, I was just looking at that one myself. It hasn't been doing too great, George. You know, sometimes the R&D on these things takes a little time. That one's going to be a good one for us, though. Yeah. Well, uh, the thing is, Park uh, has a lot of expenses come up recently. And uh, I was thinking, well, I might like to cash that one out. You know, just get the money and cut my losses. George, George, what are you talking about? You don't want to get out now. You're 10% down, and you're going to get hit hard with the penalties. You guys are going to do a press release on the new manufacturing process any day now. I you want to get out now, just before the thing takes off? No, I, I, I don't, but April said that. April said? I, April said. George, let me tell you what I do when my old lady tries to tell me what to do. I say, hey, I make the money, I'll spend it any way I see fit. Didn't you make all this dough to begin with, George? Isn't that what you told me? Your wife stayed home with the kids while you slaved away at the bank? For 30 years. Yes, yes, um, but... But the nothing, is, George. See, there's, there's no buts. Listen. I can't make you any money if you won't go with my recommendations. I mean, look at that Pencourt stock. What's that? What do you got in that now? Seven grand? It's up to what? Twelve five? Didn't I tell you about that one, George? Didn't I tell you to load up on that one, George? Didn't I tell you I have my own mother in that stock, George? Yeah, that w that was a good investment. That was a good investment, but this Mitchum stock. This Mitchum stock is about to explode. That's what. Let me tell. Let me tell you what I want to see happen here, George. I want to see us make some real money on this one, George. I want to see you hit this one big, okay? customer and you deserve it. Let's look at putting another 10 grand into that Mitchum stock. Now's the time to buy it, George. Okay? The stock is underpriced. All right? Buy low, sell high, George, right? Can you see that, George? Can you see it? Uh, I, I can see that, but I, I just don't have the money right now. You don't? Let's okay. See. Well, let's get at least five grand in there. You can do that, right, George? I, I don't really have that cash right now. Maybe I could move something over from CDs. How soon can you get it here, George? This thing is going to explode when they have that press conference. You know, I can, I can maybe cover you with the bean counters, you know, if you can get it here within the next three, three, three days. Three days. You can do that. Right, George? Right, George? Well, I, I suppose I... Uh, let me tell you what I'm going to do, George. 
Let me tell you, you're a good customer. I'm going to eat my commission on this one, George. I'll take one of the girls upstairs out to dinner tonight, show her a good time, my treat. Talk her into covering you until your check comes in, okay? I'll make my money on the next one, okay, pal? I, 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 don't, I don't really want you to have to do that, Park. I, I could get down to the bank first thing tomorrow. And... Now let me lock you in at 7 and a quarter. I'm Mitchum right now, okay? You just hold on for confirmation to verify the order, all right, George? I can hold. Thanks, Park. I... I, I really appreciate this. Hey, for you, buddy, no problem, George. Hey, if you need me after talking to confirmation, you just have her buzz you right back, okay? Have a great weekend, pal. Take care. Here we go. Cha-ching. That's why I'm the king. Five grand, 30 seconds. Right now, get on the phones, get them humming. Let's move, boys. Set up the chairs. Set up the chairs. All you gotta do is talk them out of it. Pray on the elder. I'm sure it's just a drop in the bird. Stay on them. No means yet. Hello? Mr. Torres? Hi, it's Michelle Neese. How are you? He hello, Michelle. Were you able to take your money out of Triple I? I'm not certain about any of this anymore. I've started getting a lot of mail asking me to invest in oil wells and precious metals. How do you think they happen to have gotten my name? They may have gotten your name from Park Richardson, sir. So, they keep lists of who the fools are. No, 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 I don't mean that. These crooks do share information sometimes. Yeah. I, um, made a tape uh, the other night when I called them back. Would you like it? Do you think it would help? Yes, I, I would love to have that. That, that was a wonderful idea. You might be able to do me another favor. Do you have a pencil handy? I'd like you to give them a name. Can I help you? Mail lady. Get express mail that needs a signature. Yeah, one second. Hi. How are Here's you? Mail. Thank you so much. I've got a restricted delivery for Park Richardson. Is okay. he here? Yeah, yeah, hang on one second. Park. Yeah. Yeah, what do you need? Park? Yeah. Just need your signature right there. All right, thanks. Always happy to see the mail come in. Good news, huh? Always. <laughs> you doing all right, Denise? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing terrific. Good. Thanks. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> Celebrate tonight, Denise. Dinner at Pargo's. My treat. What do we One got? One room. Twelve guys. Split in the middle. No other entrance. Informant says a guy's got a gun. I didn't see one on him. Five more minutes to Baghdad. Good job. Investment fraud is just one of the type of phone frauds out there. To avoid these telemarketing criminals, listen for some of these tip-offs. You must act now or the offer will expire. 
take your time. Be extremely cautious about investing with an unknown caller or responding to a mail solicitation that insists you must make up your mind immediately. You must send money, give a credit card or bank account number, or have your check picked up by a courier before you've had a chance to consider the offer carefully. Never send cash and keep financial information private unless you know who you're dealing with and get all information in writing before you agree to buy. You can't afford to miss this high-profit, no-risk offer. Realize that there's no such thing as a risk-free investment. Take the time to do your homework. Read articles in news and financial publications like Barron's or the Wall Street Journal. You don't need written information or references about the company. It's a sure-fire investment. Check the firm out with the Better Business Bureau, State Attorney General's Office, or Consumer Protection Bureau. Talk to a friend, relative, or financial advisor before you do anything. And don't be afraid to hang up on pushy salespeople on the phone. Remember, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Young people can also help by keeping an eye on their parents' finances, especially if they're going through an illness that may make it difficult for them to think clearly or remember details. In this case, Inspector Neese may have prevented her father from losing money just by being alert. You can do the same for your parents. Remember, if you think you've been the victim of a telemarketing fraud, you need to report it. Contact your local postal inspectors. You can find them in the phone book or on our website at usps.com slash postal inspectors.